There is hope, there is help, there is healing, yeah, yeah. Well, here we are again with Raymond Praise. Thank you for tuning in. We're glad to have you with us today. We're going to have a, a great time together today. And I'm going to talk about rejoicing in every area. Sometimes, honey, we don't feel like rejoicing, do we? No, we don't. We don't feel like rejoicing. And, you know, regardless of what circumstances that's going on in our life, we need to learn to rejoice. Right. Uh, I was thinking about the fact, of course, I love to study uh, the Apostle Paul. Right. He's just my hero in the Bible. And, of course, one of my favorite books in the Bible is Philippians. And um, I look over in Philippians, uh, actually, chapter 4. And remember, um, he was writing this while he was in jail. Right, he was in prison. Yeah, he was in prison. And he said here in uh, verse 4 of chapter 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And I thought about the fact here he was in prison, uh, didn't know what his uh, future held for him, and yet he was rejoicing in the Lord. Right. Well, rejoicing is something we choose to do. Yes. You can choose to rejoice or you can choose not to rejoice. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and as you know that God is with you and is seeing you through, you can rejoice because yes. of what the... The Bible says yes. uh, rejoicing increases your strength to in the middle of all your mm -hmm. circumstances and your situations you're going through. It'll re, it, it, re, it, it increases your strength to carry on knowing that God is there on your side. Yes. You know, let's go now where I'm talking about rejoicing in every area. Habakkuk chapter 3. I'm going to read first from the NIV, and then I'm going to read the message. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vine, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pens and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go to the heights. Now the Message Bible says it like this. Though the cherry tree doesn't blossom and the strawberries don't ripen, though the apples are worm-eaten and the wheat fields are stunted, though, though the sheep pens are sheepless and the cattle barns are empty, I am singing joyful praises to God. I am turning cartwheels of joy to my Savior God, counting on God's rule to prevail. I take heart and gain strength. I run like a deer. I feel like I am the king of the mountain. Now that speaks to us a little bit more clearly. Uh, now, as we're looking at this, he is saying, even though all of these things that are not good are happening, he's still saying he will rejoice in the Lord. And then, you know, Habakkuk declares in, in Habakkuk 2.4, the just shall live by faith. And now he is vowing to rejoice even though he sees some hard times. And, and, and I want you to, we're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to talk about, when circum, first of all, when circumstances change, you can rejoice because God and his word has not changed. <laughs> Circumstances change every day. How many of you have found that out? That things change every day. I mean, you know, the weather, it is very changeable. <laughs> Our economic condition, it changes by the hour. You know, uh, he says here, even though that the fruit trees are not bearing any fruit, even though the fields are not bearing any harvest, 
even though the cattle and the sheep are gone, he said, I'm still going to rejoice. You know, as I said a moment ago, our economic condition changes and fluctuates almost hourly. You know, if you're one of those guys that that, that watch the stock market, if you look, get on that that channel and where all that is, you'll see it going up and down and fluctuating almost hourly. You know, we make bad investments and businesses are downsizing and and uh, mergers and takeovers and the political climate is very unstable all over the world, not just here in our own country, but all over the world, the political climate. But in the midst of all of this change, in the midst of all of this fluctuation, God does not change. The word of God does not change. Tell your neighbor, say, God doesn't change. God doesn't change. Tell somebody else, the word of God is the same all the time. Now, you know, in Malachi 3, 6, he says, I am the Lord, I do not change. And of course, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, we can rejoice. No matter what happens, God is still God. No matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, God is still on the throne. No matter how tough it gets, Jesus is still the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And we can rejoice in that fact. You know, I think sometimes that we need to stop and begin to look for things to rejoice about. You know, I, I, this week, I was just telling Annette, you know, she was going out and doing a little shopping and buying stuff and so forth. And I said, you know, I just thank God that we have the finances to do this. How many times you go out to eat or you go buy the kids something and you say, thank you, Lord, that I have the finances to do this. Because I don't know about you, but there was a time that we didn't have it. <laughs> I was just thinking, we got a text from Denise last night as they got into to Orlando and went to the, the Disney World there. And she texted her mom and said, I'm, we're staying in the hotel on the property where the monorail goes through. And she said, I always wanted to stay there. And her mother told her, said, well, we got to go to Disney World, but that was too, back then we couldn't stay there. And, uh, and uh, but uh, we rejoiced in the fact that we even could go to Disney World, you know, but, uh, and, and, uh, Denise was rejoicing in the fact that she'd be able to take her boys there. And Lynette told her, said, if you stay faithful to God, he will always reward you. Amen. You know, sometimes we need to realize we need to rejoice in what God is doing for us right now and realize that that rejoicing will take us to a higher level. You know, complaining about where you are now will keep you at that level. But rejoicing in the Lord and thanking him for what you got and what you're going to get will take you to another level. Hello. How many times do you see people that are not grateful for what they do have? All the time. You know, we need to rejoice. God is still the I am that I am. And he never changes. God's word does not change. God does not change. Jesus does not change. But my circumstances can change. So I rejoice in that fact. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. 
First Peter 1, 24, 25. For all men are like the grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field, and the grass withers, and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands for a little while. Stands part of the time. Forever. That means that if it ever was, then it is. And if it is, it will still be. Tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, the next year, the next thousand years, if God, it well, does not change. The Word of God does not change. God does not change. Hallelujah. You know, Number two, when trouble comes, you can rejoice in your salvation. You know, there in the back it says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, I will be thankful, excuse me, in God my Savior. Uh, let, let's read that from this, this message deal here. Let's see what it says there. Counting on God's rule to prevail, I take heart and gain strength. Counting on God's rule to prevail. Not what somebody else has ruled, but what God has ruled. Not what the devil has ruled, but what God has ruled. Hello there. Now, we need to realize that every step has to be ordered of the Lord. And as you're going through each step in life, it needs to be, be, you need to realize that your steps are being ordered by the Lord. Rejoice and be glad in it. And you'll find out that you'll come out to victory on the other side. Now see, God never promised us that we wouldn't have a problem. Hello? He never promised us that we wouldn't have a problem. Now, through salvation, we have eternal life. That's what it said. In this world, we will, uh, you know, uh, we, let me go back here. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I always will be joyful in my Savior. When trouble comes, we rejoice in our salvation. In John 16, 33, it said, in this world, you will have trouble. Now, let's go. Let's go read that, that, let's go read that scripture there in John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured deeply at peace in the godliness, in the godless world, you will continue to experience difficulty, but take heart, I've conquered the world. Now that's the, that's the message translation of it. You see, actually it says in this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulty. Uh, the the, the King, New King James says in this world, you will have trouble. As long as we're in this world, we're going to face some difficulties. Somebody said, well, you're being negative. No, I'm trying to tell you what, what the Lord said. Because Why are we going to face difficulties? Because Paul tells us that the God of this world is the devil himself. And I would have to go into a, a, in, back in the Garden of Eden. Everything was perfect, but then the devil got control of this world. Through that, through Jesus Christ, we, we come back into a spiritual revelation of who Jesus is. And as we live with him, we, can, we may experience the difficulties, but it says, in this godless world, you will continue to experience that. But take heart, cheer up. I have conquered the world. In other words, in your salvation, Jesus has conquered the world. Our source is out of this world. 
Somebody said, that's, have you ever heard that expression? Out, that, that's, out of the, that's out of this world. Well, our source is out of this world. It's Christ. He, he's not a part of this world. And Acts 17, 28 says, in him we live part of the time. In him we live and move and have our being in him, in Christ. The most important thing that you can learn is the in him scriptures. Who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, what you can accomplish in Christ. That's the most important thing you can learn. It all comes through your salvation. We can rejoice in the promises of God that are for now and for the future. Do you realize that there are promises that are for the now, but there are promises in the word of God that are for the future? Hello. You know, Psalms 27, 1, the Lord is, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Are we afraid of the pestilence and all the things? No, we don't have to be afraid. Because Paul says that he, we've not been given a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. Hello. You know, when you're in fear... Your, your mind is not sound. You make irrational decisions. Fear will cause you to panic. And when you panic, you make crazy decisions. You know, there's one commercial, I don't know what it is. I think it's a, 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 for the cable television. You know, when you, when you do this, this happens, and when you do that, that happens. Hello, you know, m making a bad decision, and they end up in a, it ends up, it ends up bad, you know, because they didn't decide to have a cable TV to start with. I think that's what the, the, the commercial's all about. Well, you know, sometimes we're like that with the things of God. We make decisions, and, and uh, we continue to make, we, you know, but we got to realize that we need to make a decision with the Lord. The Lord is my strength. I will not fear. You know, anytime anybody used to ask my dad a question about something, he'd say, what does the Bible say? Now, I'm not talking about whether you should get a drink of water or not. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about decision, major decisions. In the midst of trials, God can take care of us. See, that's what it says here. It, you know, we go back there. Though the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom will I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who, uh, uh, of whom shall I be afraid? Both of those are talking about fear. Did you know that most of the time when we get in the circumstances of life with all of these things that are going on, most of the time that we get in fear rather than getting in faith. Oh, I'm just afraid of what's going to happen. Well, I can tell you what's going to happen. What the Bible said is going to happen. You know, a lot of people are getting in fear over all the things that are, that are beginning to take place. And if you know anything about Bible prophecy, it's, it's just it's, what the Bible says is happening. The big bear is starting to roar. If you study Bible prophecy, the big bear is Russia. 
and the Middle East. They all are working together. And a lot of people are getting afraid. Oh, what's going to happen? You know what? I'm not, I, somebody said, aren't you concerned? Yeah, I'm concerned, but I'm not the least bit afraid because what, God has already told me what's going to happen here in the Word of God. He's already told us about it. My trust is in Him. My protection is in Him. My faith is in Him. So I'm just going to rejoice and go on. And somebody said, well, you're going to change your style. No, I'm going to go and live life. <coughs> Some people are there. They're, they're hoarding up all kinds of food and all this kind of stuff. <coughs> well, you know, you can do that if you want to. But I believe that God, just the way God took care of the children of Israel, he'll take care of his children today. We are in the last days, that's for sure. If you know anything about Bible prophecy, you can see it all come into pass. You can see what the Bible said starting to, to, to come in, into existence. But I'm not going to fear. My trust is in the Lord. You know that, that one there in the message, though I stand, I'm going to just paraphrase it, we can stand on the brink of what looks like disaster and not be afraid knowing that God is our strength. God will take care of us. God will see us through. Hello. You know, God will enable me to do what I need to do. God will cause me to step into blessing if I will continue and rejoice in him and rejoice in what the Bible says. You know, God will cause me to walk in places that I never thought I'd ever walk in. Hello. You know, there used to be an old song we used to sing. Lord, lift me up, let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Rejoice. God will strengthen you in the midst of the storm. Jesus purposefully healed on the Sabbath day. It was designed to show them that healing the sick was sacred enough to be done on the Sabbath day. See, that was a sacred day. And that healing the sick is really an essential part of his spiritual ministry. That's the reason he healed on the Sabbath. The Bible Healing Study Course, a comprehensive study of healing by Kenneth E. Hagan. This Bible study is filled with 22 chapters that ask questions, give answers, and even offers tests on healing in the Word. Executing the Basics of Healing, a dynamic book by Kenneth W. Hagan, with chapters like What is to Blame for Sickness, Four Biblical Steps to Receive Healing, The Terms of Our Covenant Healing, and much, much more. All three healing tools can be yours for only $24.95. Just call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or visit rhema.org to order. I really know that if you'll take what I talked about there about rejoicing, and begin to practice it, it's going to make a change in your life. Yes, and you know, I don't know what you're going through right now, but God does. And I just want to tell you that whatever you're going through, you're going to go through it. You're yes. not going to stay in it, but you're going to go through it. And with God right there by your side, you'll make it to the other side. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, our, our offer for this uh, this month. This is the last time you can last get this special price. Last time you can price. get this special price of twenty four ninety five, dollars uh, savings of eight ninety five. dollars normally thirty three ninety. dollars This is the last week. That's go, right. Go right there now to the to your computer. And most everybody has a computer. Some That's people right. don't. If you don't, there's a phone number you can call. But if you, the quickest way to do it is on the computer. Go right there to rhema.org and you can order that. Order it right now and it'll be right it'll to your house within quickly. three or four days. That's right. Well, Living Faith's Crusade will be in St. Cloud, Minnesota. That's June 8th through the 10th at Joy Christian Center. So if you're in that area, 
make plans now to attend. And then we're going to Stevens Point, Wisconsin, June 11th through the 13th at Good News Fellowship Church. So come out yeah. and visit. I'm looking forward to being there. I haven't been in that part of the country in, in years. Mm -hmm. And I'm really looking forward to being there. And hey, uh, some of you might want to just uh, come on out and, and drive up or fly up and be with us there. We'd, That's we'd right. love to see. Hey, and if you watch us on television, please come up after the services yes. and talk to us. We don't run. We go right down That's front. Right. In the morning after she teaches, she stands down front. After I do it at night, I stay right down the front. We want to meet you and we want to say hi to That's you. That's right. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. And you, if you watch this program, let us hear from you. Write us an email. We we read every one of them. Yes. Just write to uh, do, do write to partner services at rhema.org. And, yes. And they send, a, they send, they send them, them right up, up to, to our us. office. In yes. fact, I was just reading some yesterday in the office. That's right. Well, you know, uh, if you want to see us, you can. Uh, uh, Roku is getting really popular now. In fact, we were one of the first ones to have, to have a channel on Roku, but we've got a channel on Roku. <laughs> uh, then you can go uh, online to, to rhema.org and get our Word of Faith magazine. You can you can read it online or you can download it. Or you can <coughs> ask for a normal copy of it. Right, and you can watch Rhema Praise uh programs that have been archives mm -hmm. there and uh, you can conferences. listen to our podcast yeah and there, there's conferences and all kinds of stuff there and of course you can join us live for our service church services at yes. at 10 a.m on sunday and 7 p.m on sunday night and 7 p.m on wednesday That's it's streamed right. live at, but all of this information can you can get it through rhema.org. That's I mean, right. if you don't want to know anything about us just go there and all the information's there well Thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Are you called to ministry or just want a deeper knowledge of the Bible? Now is the time to take action. Enroll at Rama Bible Training College for this upcoming semester. Call 918-258-1588, extension 2238, or get all the details now at rbtc.org slash trendsetters. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world. Thank you.